Don't anyone ever try this. Everybody knows somebody who reckons that their cousin's best mate's brother once knew somebody who went all the way round on a swing. Fact is, I don't think it's ever actually happened. Not on a real swing, with chains, anyway. There's just too many things that stack up against it. Let's see. I can just about push an empty swing over, but add 75 kilos of fully grown man, and a quick calculation shows you'd need a shove force of nearly a tonne to get round. You'd have to have the biggest big brother ever. So what I want to do is, with a normal park swing, see what it would take to make it actually happen. And I think it'd take something pretty extreme. First step, some quick tests with my very own mini-me swing. <sighs> That's a big issue. But, I mean, it shows that scaled down about a hundred times, yeah, a guy can push another fella all the way around a swing. What I want to find out is not what will get this to go all the way around, because I know I could stick like a massive rocket on there and it will eventually go all the way around. I want to find out what the minimum requirement is to get it all the way around, because if a person wants to go around on a swing, he doesn't want to go around a hundred times, just the once. What's more, the propulsion system has to be smooth enough that the G-force doesn't break his neck. I figure the best way of getting this round for reliability and variability is a water rocket. Now, I've deliberately got the thrust here coming through the centre of gravity, so this thing won't rock around too much. It should just go straight. I now need to put four atmospheres of air in there. That's like four times atmospheric pressure. And the thrust from that should be enough, just enough, to send this all the way around. Obviously, there's some inherent danger in there still. By the way, he cracked his head on the bar. But it shows that the principle's there, and I'm now satisfied that all these calculations will scale up, and that this is wholly possible on a human scale. The problem is that on a human scale, it's like 100 times the pressure. It's 100 times the mass. The forces are absolutely gargantuan. To achieve that, I'm building a bigger, more high-tech version of my little prototype. After reams of calculations, a couple of mates and I have spent three weeks putting together our jetpack. To hold the massive 250 atmospheres of pressure required, we're using old, lightweight American Fire Service breathing tanks, loaded with exactly 4.3 litres of water, coming through twin 5.5mm nozzles, I should get precisely the thrust I need. <laughs> Ouch. I should have seen that coming. Even with a cup full of water in the system, this test literally blew me away. A hefty solid steel workbench is no match for my 240 horsepower jetpack. I'm not sure if anybody really wants to sit on something that can chuck a metal bench across a car park. I can't push that. I know the propulsion system is up to the job. Now it's time to build the framework. With such high pressures involved, we've had to get specialist help with all the piping. Even so, we need to put the whole thing through some serious testing. At this stage, we're not using chains to hang the swing. We're going to test it first with straight bars, because if anything went wrong, and those uh, high-pressure bottles were to fall on the floor and explode, none of us would be around anymore to find out what happened next. We've added my weight in sandbags and a couple of tonnes of gas cylinders to hold down the frame. So this is it. Everything's set. Is it going to work? Two, one. It's all over the place. That frame is going to need a lot more ballast. I mean, it held. Nothing broke. You wouldn't fancy riding it, though. On the one hand, this is brilliant. The jetpack has clearly got enough oomph to get all the way round. But once at speed, there's nothing to stop it. 
This is now the big problem. At some point, the swing is going to stop rotating, but I can't predict where. If we are going to hang this from chains, what's to stop it crashing down onto the crossbar with disastrous results? Please, don't try anything like this. Wow, is all I've got to say about that. Uh, you're not going to want to go anywhere for the next 20 minutes because I guarantee you're going to want to know what happens next. Yes, indeed. Can I point out as well, this lonely little figure with his head in his hands in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen as the swing was going around at the clappers. What was going through your head? <laughs> the thing is, for all the, the number crunching and thinking, I've not seen the forces I've been predicting in real life. And it's twisting steel, it's chucking gas bottles. It was awful. Scary stuff. And it all came from a question on the roadshow. Somebody asked, did we think that anybody would really gone all the way around on a swing. And I figure that sometimes there's a limit to how far you should go to answer a question. And sometimes there isn't. So you haven't reached your limit? Wait and see. <laughs> We've been talking about this question for months now. This has been on our mind for yeah. months. OK, all will be revealed at the end of the show. It's called ramping up the tension for you. Don't go anywhere. I... Now time to return to the enduring conundrum of the 360 swing. I can't tell you how much science, maths and engineering has gone into getting this far. But I now feel it's less of a question of will it work and more one of is there a survivable way of stopping it? So, a catch mechanism. I have given this so much thought. I've thought about parachutes, I've thought about drag nets, I've thought about bungee, I've thought about circus catch nets, I've thought about absolutely everything and I feel as though none of them will do it. Because over the distances that those sort of systems work on, the forces would be absolutely huge, possibly too much for a person to handle. So I need to come up with something that acts for as long a period of time to keep that braking force to a minimum. I've decided to go for a rotating catch net. So what should happen is the rider will get jetted round as before, maintaining straight chains, land in the catch net, the friction on here will be what sucks the energy out, breaking his ball back up to there, and then drop back down, hopefully still smiling. Three, two, one. Oh! I mean, it wasn't pleasant, but it couldn't have looked more survivable. It did exactly as it was supposed to do. So now I just need to do the same thing but on a human scale. We're attaching a set of drum brakes from an old trailer to the crossbar of the swing frame. Fixed to them are bars holding a piece of netting. I opted for the stuff that goes round the outside of garden trampolines. The brakes can be adjusted so they absorb a specific force. I need them to stop the swing fully loaded at exactly the right point because I want it to go around once and once only. 60, 70, 70. Right, now we're hanging the swing from real chains, not solid bars. This is the test. Time to bring out our proper crash test dummy. He's exactly my weight, 75 kilos. Three, two, one. It's a disaster. So near, but yet so far. Suddenly, what promised to be a perfect 10 has crashed in at a miserable zero. If this had been a real person, I'd be calling an ambulance. Or maybe an undertaker. It's the netting that let us down. I figured it needs reinforcing, but with minimal extra weight. And I've worked out it needs to be set at a slightly different angle. Looks like success, or so I thought. I've seen something that looks survivable, but it also looks a bit like a car crash. Look closely at where the dummy's legs and feet hit the braking net. His shins, just down above his ankle, were banging into the, uh, the bar that, at the bottom that keeps the net taut. So we're going to adjust the seating position and, uh, and see if that can pull the legs in sufficiently. Three, two, one.
Wow. Perfection. And the first of a bunch of successful tests. The high-pressure system's firing perfectly. The braking net is spot on. All those calculations and predictions are proving accurate. And our crash test dummy is still in one piece. At least, he's not complaining. There is only one thing left to do. Move over dummy. Time to put my convictions to the test and myself in the hot seat. It might seem insane, but my calculations predict I should survive the forces involved. But please, don't try anything like this. Pretty much like that. It's been a massive investigation to answer a question from a viewer on last year's Roadshow. And now, finally, it could be solved in the blink of an eye. I never want to press a button like that again. Oh, my <laughs> God. It appears as though it is possible for a person to go all the way round on a swing. <laughs> you have seriously just raised the bar and then gone round the bar <laughs> you just raised. Absolutely. Our superhero wow. is well and truly back in the room. Well done, you. Awesome. Well, I mean, sometimes even I'm shocked at the level of faith I'll put in my own understanding <laughs> of science and engineering. It's, it's just wrong. It works. <laughs>